What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Top Rank Unbox. It's your boy Ricky, and I'm joined here by my lovely co host Jalen. And we are at the Top Rank headquarters with a very special guest. We're super excited today to introduce Tiger Johnson. Tiger is undefeated as a pro. He's 7 0, he's got five KOs, he's a former U.S. Olympian, and he fights April 1st. So, Tiger, how has camp been going for you? Um, camp's going good. I'm um, getting some good work, and, you know, um, I'm locked in and focused, you know, I had to, uh, you know, leave my city to, you know, to get more focused and, you know, Vegas is for sure helping me a lot, you know, um, and a lot of my stable mates is here too. So we all just pushing each other. Where do you usually have camp? Is it back home? Yeah, back home. Yeah. yeah. But, um, now it's to a point where like, I can't have camp at home now. It's like, Why is it's, that? Too, it's just too many dis uh, distractions. distractions. Yeah. yeah. Just family and, you know, just a lot of. I can't really focus when I'm at home. Well, it's funny because like you come to Vegas and Vegas is like the place with all the distractions, right? But what is it about Vegas that's like I could just lock in? Well, where I come from, it's not it's not sunny. Like it's it don't look like this. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like you wake up and it's like dang, another day, another dollar. You know what I mean? It's like it's you know, it's real gloomy, you know, it's cold, you know what I mean? And just the whole environment, the atmosphere is like it don't, it's not, it's not a happy energy in Cleveland. You know what I mean? Like you, all you seeing is, um, you know, uh, just it's bad things all around you. You know what I mean? Like when I'm here, I'm waking up, you know what I'm saying? I'm waking up to, you know, friendly neighbors, you know, everywhere I go, you know, everything. Like I haven't, I have not one time seen a police, seen a, a, a police car. Really? Yeah, I don't. You know, it's funny. I live here. I haven't seen one either. I see all. them every day. I don't. What? I always see them on the strip. I see them all the yeah, time. On the, yeah, on the strip. I see them on the strip, but in the like, neighborhoods, yeah, see like, them I don't, like so when I'm doing my everyday routes and stuff, like yeah. I don't be seeing no cops. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at home, I hit a car. You seeing all types of stuff at home? Yeah, <laughs> it's, the sirens be going on. It's a, it's a whole circus at home, man. So it's like it's just it's just a whole better environment here, man. I can just. It's like everything's alive here, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like I I can I could wake up and be ready to go to go to practice, you know what I mean? And then you have so, all your teammates here, like you said. So yeah, so it can't be that hard to lock in when everyone you're around is doing the same thing you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you grow up with any of those guys at all? Or did you know anyone from the amateurs? Yeah, we all we all came up together. Um me, Keyshawn, Troy, um, Duke, um, Shushu, um, who else? Uh, Richard, Jared. We all we all we all came up together in the same. Me and Jared, me and Jared, we from the same state, so I always knew we always knew each other. But and Duke, me, Jared, and Duke, we always knew each other, so we all came up together since little kids. But um, me, uh, Keyshawn, Troy, we done fought JOs together, mm -hmm. all type of stuff. So we done been around for a long time. Yeah, you yeah, y'all boys been been killing shit for a long time now. From the young amateur days and Olympics, like it's crazy, man. Um, you know, you talk about Cleveland. Tell us, you know, what it was like growing up in Cleveland for you. What was your childhood like? Um, well, growing up for me it was like, uh, you know, um, unfortunate um, circumstances, you know, um, of course, but you know, um, I started boxing early at age seven just because I was fighting all the time. Like, cause the school I went to, um, it went from kindergarten to eighth grade. So I was catching a school bus mm -hmm. with all types of older kids. And, you know, I was real small for my age. So it was like, it was just all around. Like it was just war going, going to school, in school, after school. So it was just all the time. I was just fighting all the time. And um, my dad put me in early at seven. I was originally supposed to go in at 10. But he was like, man, you gotta, he was like, man, we need to, you going in now, man. You know what I mean? And that was, that was like the beginning of my career. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, man, they really got all you kids just in one bus. That's man, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. That's, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it was what's crazy. What's the craziest thing that happened yeah. in the I, bus? I was, say it again. <laughs> like, what's the craziest thing that happened in the bus? On the bus? That you saw. Or that you did. Preferably <laughs> saw. It was, it was just. <laughs> It was it was just man like kid the kids was bad man like you know what I mean like it was just all types of stuff going on like you know kids fighting teachers you know what I mean or on the bus 
kids Jeez. getting jumped, just all types of stuff, man. It was just all types of stuff going on, you know what I mean? But me, it was like, I was so small for my age. It was like, I low-key had like a, I had anger issues when I was a little kid. Like I ain't take nothing. I don't care how big you was, how old you was, I ain't care. You know what I mean? So it was times where I might get into a fight with an older kid. I'm first, second grade, find somebody that's in the sixth grade. You know what I mean? So damn, I like, you know, take a little L, come home crying or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? And, and you know, my dad was like, man, uh, you know, we just gonna throw you in early. You know what I mean? And, it ain't fixed nothing. I was still fighting, but <laughs> that was that was the beginning of my career. You feel yeah. me? But uh, as I got older, you know, a lot of the kids started to respect me more. Like all of the older kids started to respect me more. Um, you know, and I hit a growth spurt, man, when I was probably like fifteen or sixteen, because I was I was small. Like I was so small. Like I would have never thought I'd be the size I am now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like growing up, I thought I was gonna be a featherweight. Like mm. as a as a professional, you know what I mean? And um, I hit a growth spurt, and you know, getting bigger and stronger, and you know that was. They they started respecting you more once they knew you was uh, boxing at a competitive level. Like they dudes was. I felt like you. uh, I felt like I had got my. I had by the time I got to middle school, I had like a reputation. It just you know just you know just getting into fights and just beating up people, but. <laughs> It was, by the time I got to middle school, I already had a reputation, you know what I mean? And it didn't really do nothing but get worse because now everybody just like, you know what I mean? Like boxers, I feel like pe like people outside of boxing, they don't respect boxers like mm -hmm. as knowing how to fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you get tested every five minutes. So it was like every every blue moon, I just had to be like, all right, man, now I got to. Yeah, you feel me? And now Wait, I gotta so kick pe your ass. People would test you more when they knew that you were a professional fighter. Yeah, because not taking it seriously. Yeah, because they found out that I'm good at boxing, and they wanted to test you. Yeah, like, so hilarious. like, and then mind you, I was still small for my age, so, so somebody they thought they could take you. On. Yeah, so they they, they 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 might find out. I used to get man, look, I I from kindergarten to tenth grade nonstop getting suspended all every Ooh. year, Ooh. multiple <laughs> times. Like I don't know how many referrals I got, suspensions I got, man, but. Like it got to a point where my mom was just <laughs> she she was she she was mad at me when I was still in elementary getting suspended. You know what I mean? So it was it was bad. Like I just I just couldn't stop fighting. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, man, it was it all it all paid it all kind of paid off to look where you're at now. Yeah, yeah. and you know um, as far as like school, it was like I knew like as a little kid that I wasn't gonna be going to college or just doing anything. That involved me going to school, so um, I knew boxing was going to be the thing that was going to change my life. You know what I mean? I knew school wasn't going to be it at a young age, so boxing like really like saved my life for real. Why do you think school wasn't it for you? Um, honestly, I just didn't like school. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I had like my friends and stuff like in school, but like just the overall like, like I was taking classes that I didn't want to take. Like they signed me up for. Certain classes that I didn't want to do, you know what I mean? Like they put me in advanced math before, mm. then sign up for that. So it was like it was just certain things that was going on where I was like, man, I'm not, I don't want to do this, you know what I mean? But I mean, I I still wanted to get my diploma, but it just didn't work out that way, you know what I mean? It wasn't intentional, but I had dropped out. Of, um, I want to say like probably like eleventh grade. It was like that. It was just like a done deal. And I actually tried to get my GED, but during that time, I was already on the USA team. And it just didn't work out, right. you know what I mean? Like it was just too much for me to handle. So I was like, man, I'ma just focus on boxing. You How did your folks feel about that? My mom was mad when I when I didn't graduate. When I didn't graduate, like she she was she was mad. My dad was disappointed too, but my dad understood. You know what I mean? He 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 wanted me to graduate, of course, but he he understood. You know what I mean? And but my mom, she was sick. Like she was just like, wow, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it was it was. It was it was a disappointment to myself too, because I watched my friends graduate. Mm. So I'm like, I'm in a group chat, they posting they mm. uh yeah. they caps and stuff, and I'm just in there like, dang. I went, I was silent for like that whole that whole time. Like I ain't never say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it was times where they was asking I've me like, been man. There. Yeah. <laughs> they was asking me like, I don't miss I missed everything. I miss prom. I miss homecoming. I ain't get a chance to do none of that. You know this, what I mean? Yo, you didn't miss much, <laughs> but yeah. I feel you though. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of fighters we talk to on this show, they they say the same thing. Like Xander said the same thing. He didn't get to go to prom, nothing, bro. Like, yeah. but and then I especially like um like my first my first school dance was in middle school. Um, you know, like like I said, like 
I came up in unfortunate circumstances, so it was like I couldn't really afford to have all the clothes and stuff like that. So it was like I done been I done been asked to go to dances by numerous girls, you know what I mean? But I turned them all down because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to have the clothes that I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, yeah. Work, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Get what I want for the dance, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was like, man, I'ma just sit this one out. But it just kept happening as time go on. So I was like, man, and I was missing tournaments as a kid because I couldn't afford to go. Um, That's always the toughest part too as an amateur, bro. Like a lot of young folks always got, like you got to get donations from people, go yeah. fund me. like them shit, that shit is not cheap. Man, look, Travel, hotel, food. And, and at that time, go fund me wasn't even a thing no. at that time. Um, like, so like my dad, he, he was a, um, you know, he was an entrepreneur. Like he's real good at, Selling anything, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like clothes, whatever. So um one time, one time uh I missed the silver gloves. I don't know if you know what that is, but yeah, I missed yeah. I missed silver gloves um nationals because we couldn't afford to go. And I was like, I was hurt, like I was crying. That's a big that's a big deal. Man. Yeah, especially like, made, as a young age. Yeah. yeah, I made it to Silver Gloves Nationals. I was crying, all types of stuff, man. I didn't want to box no more because I feel like it was the point. So excuse me, but um my dad was like, man, look, he's like, man, we're going to have to just raise the money. So he taught me how to sell candy or cookies. And I want to say I was like 10, 11 years old. And I was just banging candy, cookies. Man, I was raising like thousands of dollars, man, like just selling candies and cookies. And the thing is, when he taught me how to how to do it, it was I was really like hustling, like really going to barbershops, beauty salons, wherever, like the more... Really going in, and I actually held. I, I had to sell my, you know, my 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 cookies and my mm-hmm. candy. Like people wasn't just saying yeah because I was a kid. Like I really had to. You had to sell it. Yeah, sell. You pitch. I had to. I had to learn how to talk to people. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it was times where I was getting kicked out of barbershops because there was like no soliciting. You know what I mean? Like a lot of a lot of adults gave me a hard time. You know what I mean? Like, really. Every barbershop I've grown up in, and when there's kids come up, you know, they do the fundraiser for the football, or whatever. Man, look. Some, they're like, they're good with it, but damn, they got people over there saying, Man, look, we're sure. talking about Cleveland. <laughs> Where there's no rules. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But don't get me wrong, it was it was for sure beauty salons and barbershops that showed me a lot of love, but it was also some that gave me a hard time, you know what I mean? And it was it was tough. Like it was times where like it was times where I'll go a whole day and then Sell half half a uh, half a box, and I'd be like just so disappointed and sad, like wanted to give up. But my dad, like he taught me, like he showed me, like man, you're not everything not gonna be just handed to you. You mm-hmm. gotta you gotta work for yeah. it. You know what I mean? So as 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 I was getting more and more experience in selling candies and cookies, by the time I was like 14, like everybody, the whole city knew who I was just from selling candies and cookies. Like whenever I walked in. They just, they already know what's going on. Say, yo, Tiger, I need that. Yeah, I'm, they, as, soon, as soon as I walk in, I won't have to say nothing half the time. They just be like, man, go ahead, you know what I'm saying? Just you feel me? But in the beginning, like, um, I went to my first um, the first time I the, the first time I was raising money, I was going to my first national tournament, which was ringside, and I was going with one of my uh one of my homeboys. I, I grew up with uh, Ace Vega, him him and his uh. Him and his dad was going to ringside. And me and him were sparring partners. So one time they came to our gym, we sparred, and his dad asked me, was I going to ringside? And I was like, nah. And um, you know, I couldn't afford to go, or whatever. And he was like, man, you can ride, ride with us. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta come up with the money, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You good with us, you feel me? So that was the first time that that was when I started to raise the money. And probably like that first weekend, uh I probably raised like over a thousand dollars. Shit. Wow. You know what I mean? That's young too. That's yeah. probably been so good for you now, like for your character to have gone through that and to know how to sell a product. Like, how do you feel that's affected you now that you might have more money than you did before? Um, it's 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 a blessing, you know what I mean? And you know, um just 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 from looking at how how the beginning was to now, it was like like growing up, I didn't see, I didn't, man, I, man, look, I, on everything I love, man, like I did not think that I would be signed to no top rank promotions growing up as a kid. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't see all this. I didn't see me going to the Olympics or nothing like that. It was a dream. You know what I mean? But I didn't, I didn't see all this growing up. You know what I mean? I didn't know what was going to happen. But, um, you know, luckily I had, you know, both my parents, you know, my dad was on me my whole life. So 
he always gave me motivation. And even when times was rough, like it was times where like we don't win winners without heat. You know what I mean? Without no hot water. Like we done done I, I watched I watched the Cavs win the championships with without any cable. Mm. We ain't even had cable. We was we was we had the uh antenna. The, an, the, the antenna, antenna, right? <laughs> and there was times like during the game, it'll just it'll just it like start going out. We like, man, what? But but I was able to watch like the the final last of the game when we won and stuff, but it was it was for sure hard, man. And then um, you know, uh if anything, for real, for real, like, I feel like what really changed my life, like before like the Olympics was me making the USA team um as a youth. Um, I went to youth nationals that was held in Reno, uh, Nevada, and I like I I trained. I worked so hard. Like I trained. I trained so hard because I was banking on that. And 2016 was the year I was supposed to graduate. Mm -hmm. So the beginning of that year, I was already I already had dropped out of school. So my mom was already mad at me on me, and I didn't have no job. So I was just pretty much just just training boxing, just trying to you know trying to do something, but. Um, that January of 2016, that was Youth National. So I was banking on that to make the team, and that would have been like a good start of my year. Even though I didn't, even though I'm not graduating, at least I'm on the USA team. I'm right. doing something. That's good. a big, that's a big yeah. compliment too. You know what I mean? So I lost to Ryan Garcia in the semis, and that was just like the most. I was just like, I went home. It was just like, dang man, like I was banking on this tournament to make the team. I came home. I still not. I st I'm still not graduating. I don't have a job. You feel me? So I was just like, wow, this is crazy. And I spent, uh, um, it took a minute to raise the money to go there. So I feel like man, I just wasted my money, all types of stuff. So later that year, um, we had Golden Gloves. I made the Golden Gloves national team, right? We didn't go because the, we couldn't afford to go. The whole team, like mm. the whole, this, the, I made Cleveland National uh, Golden Glove team, and they didn't take the whole team because they couldn't afford to take us. Oh my god! So I'm like, man, this is <laughs> you feel me? So I'm like, man, this is it, man. I'm done. You know what I mean? And um, so after that, um, my coach Sappho he convinced me to go to uh, JOs, but that that was that was the first year they had a 17 and 18 division for JOs. So I'm like, all right, man. So we get there. Um, this is like probably like around June. And um, mind you, that's when everybody went to Rio for the Olympics. Yep. So uh, I get there, and I'm in I'm inside Wayans, and I run into Mark Castro, and he was telling me he was like, he was like, "Yo, you still fight 132?" And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm 141 now. But he was like, "Oh yeah, so because you know Ryan and uh, what's his name, Brian Lewis, they they thinking about going pro, so you might be the third place replacement." So I'm like, "Oh, where?" So after that. Um, I'm calling the USA Boxing just to give them my information to, you know, just in case if they do go pro, they can call me in for a replacement. So they never got back to me. So I just left it alone. Right when they came back from uh, uh, Rio, they they emailed me and was like, I got selected mm. as the number three to go to Youth Worlds. So I made the team by being a number three because the number one and the two turned pro. So I trained real hard right before camp. I get to Colorado. Um, I'm around all the number ones like Mark Castro, Richard Torres, um, Dylan Price, like everybody was the number one. So mm -hmm. I felt out of place already. Did when you? I, yeah, when I got there, I'm like, man, dang. Like you felt a little intimidated, like not just intimidated. like the, not not like by their skills, but just like like you said, like feeling like you belonged type shit. Not intimidated. It just felt weird because like we were, the first meeting, man. Look, when I got there, the first meeting we had was K K. K was the uh you know K always gave like motivational speeches and stuff. So when we get there, he talking to all the other fighters and he like, man, y'all number one for a reason. Da 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 and stuff. And I'm sitting there like, Dang. <laughs> like what about me? I'm like, dang man, like he ain't, I know he ain't talking about me. Like, y'all the number three. Me. You feel me? So I'm just sitting there like, dang, you feel me? I'm everybody around me the number one. So I'm just like, dang, that's that's crazy. So uh, like even like um. But K didn't know I was the number three. That's mm -hmm. the funny part. He found out I was the number three when we got to Russia oh, after shit. I won my first fight. But during that camp, um, hey, like I was the number three. Like that's what that's what I was labeled as the number three. You feel me? But um, we train real hard. We get to Russia. We get to Russia, and um, so everybody know like Cuba always the yeah the top they, teams, they, they, yeah. right? We get to Russia, and um, Coach Billy, he's he was our head coach. 
he was going over the brackets um, uh, after the draw. He, he got to my way. He was like, Tiger, you got Cuba first night. <laughs> Everybody, the whole hallway just went silent. Yo, this is the crazy thing with Cuba. The dudes y'all be fighting, they're like fucking 10, 12 years older than you guys. Man. Grown look, ass men. Man, look, the whole hallway just went silent. Because <laughs> uh, like, like before he got to me, like he was like, Dylan, you got so and so, you got this and that. Everybody had like some cool little warm ups. When he got to me, he was like, Tiger, you got Cuba first night. Everybody was just like. What did you say? I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> I'm like, cool. <laughs> you feel me? But oh uh, me and Dylan, me and Dylan Price was roommates. Um, so we get to the man. The whole night was silent. Like, really? Man, man, look, man. The whole night was silent. What did man, he like, get? What was his? Dylan. Um, Dylan had a tough bracket too, but um, I can't remember who he fought that day, but it was. Each, each day was different weight classes. So mm-hmm. the day that I fuck you, but he didn't fight. Oh. So um, the whole night was just silent, man. Like he <laughs> he was just like, man, hey, just, hey, th- th- this was the last conversation we had. He was like, hey, man, do your thing. We just went to sleep. That oh, was it. Shit. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, man, bet. So um, I beat Cuba, smoked him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I smoked him, beat Cuba. I come back to the corner, um, coming to the corner. The whole corner was just like, oh shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like everybody was just like, everybody was just happy. You know what I'm saying? K, Billy, everybody was happy. I get back to the room with Dylan. Dylan was like, man, I ain't gonna lie. We thought we was going home. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know what? I Yo. I appreciate the honesty, man. You feel me? Yeah. But I already knew everybody thought I was gonna You just you felt me? that because I was I was the number three. Yeah. So nobody expected me to get past the first day, especially against Cuba. Right. But that whole tournament, man, they fed me to the straight wolves, like. They had me on the bracket with the with the reigning champions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody that was in the top rankings. I had to fight Japan. I had to fight Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, like Morocco. I had a, I was I was going through all of them. I got the gold medal in the finals against uh Uzbekistan. And that was the uh and you know, that was that was the end of the youth. But I come home two weeks later, you know, I'm 18. So two weeks later, I gotta go to Elite now, which is 19 and older. So I'm still 18. We go to Kansas City two weeks later. Um, but before, when I came home, my mom my mom was happy for me, of course. But she was like, what you going to do about school? Mm. So I'm like, no. so I'm like, you on the top of the world yeah, right so now. Your mom was, so home, what about school? I got the gold medal. I come home. I still ain't graduate. It's, it's November now. You know what I mean? So she's like, so what are you going to do about school? Are you going? Like, what's up? I'm like, man. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to just get a job. You know what I mean? But uh, so... Um, K had hit me up probably like two weeks before the nas- the next nationals. And he was like, man, he was like, man, train hard, man. You know, you make the team, you get a stipend every month. So I told my mom, I was like, man, I make if I make this team, I'm gonna get a stipend. You know what I mean? That that could be my job. So she was like, all right, two weeks later, um, I go to Kansas City and I'm fighting against Grown man, like I'm 18 still. Man, I fought somebody from California. Man, dude had teardrops under his eyes. <gasps> he like he was fresh. He was for so sure fresh out. Ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah. He was fresh out. You know what I mean? I was fighting um, just grown men, and then the one of the best fights of that tournament was me and Shushu. Me and Shushu had to fight each other. Ooh. Yeah, we fought uh, in the semis, and um, the whole place just erupted when we fought. Like yeah. the whole like he had all all East Coast. Booing me, all types of stuff, man. But it was me and Shusha, we, you know what I'm saying? We banged it out. Um, and I won, I won the whole tournament. And that was like the beginning of my whole, my whole, uh, Olympic journey. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, man. You, you had quite the, the amateur career, bro. Like, again, you won multiple elite national championships, competed in the Pan Am games. Um, you fought at the world championship level and the amateur world championships. Um, getting to the Olympics, like, what was that experience and that feeling like for you so, and your family? How, like, how did your mom feel? Like, yeah, you know, school didn't work out and stuff. But like, damn, I'm I'm an Olympian now. I mean, it was a dream. It was a, it was a dream come true. And we thought we thought we was gonna have a weird experience because of COVID. Right. You know what I mean? And we get there, man. Like, um, we, we get to we had a training camp in Miyazaki, um, Miyazaki, Japan. Um, when we uh when we got there. We get off the plane, man. The whole airport, like, like, like all the uh, Japanese people was just showing us love, man. Like they had signs, USA signs. It was mm. cameras everywhere. Like it was just, it was crazy. Like 
from 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 when we landed all the way to our bags, to our bags, man, they was just like showing us just so much love. So we we felt we felt like you know we felt like Olympians, you know what I mean? Like the COVID really then really played no factor. So uh, we had a real good training camp at Miyazaki. Then when we get to Tokyo, we get to the village, man. It was like the same thing. Like they all just showed us love, man. Like it was crazy. And then before we got the before we even left Colorado, we had a meeting and they were saying like um. So we got our Olympic gear with Under Armour, we, like our USA boxing Olympic gear. But we, but you know, in the Olympics, you get the polo, the Nike, Nike and stuff yeah. like that. But they were saying like, don't get your hopes up. Like you know what I mean, like you know what I'm saying, like you know, don't expect a lot because of COVID. So we didn't expect, we didn't really expect a lot. Man, we get to the village, we go into our room. It was just big luggages with our names on it, like polo, polo, Nike. Just luggages, man. Like just filled with all types of stuff, like um, sunglasses. They gave us a watch. A watch, man. They gave us all types of stuff, and we was just like, "Dang, you feel me?" So <laughs> then we got Taylor. We had got our suits made. So it was, it was, it was a dream come true, man. Like we go in the cafeteria. I walked past Simone Biles. Like it was like the whole, like the village was crazy, man. Like everybody was, everybody was outside in the village. Like everybody was walking around, like. You know what I mean? Like everything was normal. Keyshawn was my roommate, um, and um, in the village. And this, the, and this, the crazy part that nobody like. This, the crazy part. At that time, at that, you know, Key was Key was already pro, but he wasn't signed to nobody. But um, we were just having like so many conversations about what we gonna do after the Olympics. So, like, we, he was like, "Man, who like who you want to sign to?" Da 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 and stuff. And I'm like, "Man, I was like, man, I love to go to top rank." Like we all was saying, like, "Man, we love to go to top rank." Da da, but. Um, well, Duke and Troy was already with top rank, yeah. but um, I was like, man, I'm trying to go with top rank, but we all was like, man, we were just so focused on just trying to get our stock up. Like my whole thing, I was trying to, I was so focused on getting my stock up, so top rank would want me. You know what I mean? So when I lost to Cuba in the quarterfinals, I was like, dang, man, top rank probably ain't gonna want me no more because I ain't metal. You know what I mean? But I come home, man, and, you know, top rank was, you know, they they came knocking on the door, so I was. I damn near cried. Yeah, you know, but I was that was that was cool, you know. But who called you? Who when did you get that first uh, the first moment from Top Rank or the first person to reach out to you? Um, my manager had called me. My manager called me and was like, uh, he was like, um, I got some news you might be happy with. You know what I mean? He was like, um, I ain't know where he, I ain't know where he was going, but he was like, man, you know. He like Bob really likes you, you know what I mean? I'm like Bob, who Bob Aaron? <laughs> so he like, he like, yeah, man, he really likes you, man. I talked to him, and you know, you gonna have your debut on Sean Porter and Terrence Crawford uh, card. I was like, man, that's wow, you feel me? But that was that was cool, man. That was like, and um, and, and the crazy part was, I didn't expect Bob to be there. He was there, like literally right there on my, on my debut. Nobody was there, so I look out the ring. Bob was sitting right there. Bob so, will be there from opening bell. Any fight like, he attends, dang. he'll be there from start to finish. I'm like, dang. And then I talked to him after my fight. You know, he was real, like, he was real happy. And then as time, and as time went on, like, from, from my debut to, to now, like, he's been seeing, like, the progress and the development and stuff. And he was saying, like, he was giving me, like, a lot of, um, just, a, you know, just a lot of love. You know what I mean? Like, every time I seen him, like, he always tell me, like, I'm getting better and better. And, you know, he see, he see that I'm going to be a, a world champion soon. Yeah. So you're no, just seven fights in now. You're hoping to go eight and zero in Tulsa. Was there any difficulty adjusting to the pro style? You know, you fought at the world amateur level for a very long time, and you've seen a lot of different styles. Uh, I want to say it was hard to adjust. I mean, just off, just because um, the experience that I, that I had got being on the Olympic team, but uh, my coach PJ, he came, he came back. Um, right after I came home from the Olympics, he 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 already had moved back to Cleveland. He was staying in the Bay Area for like the past six, seven years. So um I had asked him to come back to help to help coach me and he actually came back to to you know help help me be a uh to help me train for the uh, professionals. And for my debut, like he was just showing me just a lot of stuff, uh like as far as like trying to adjust to the pro style, you know what I mean? And from my debut on now, man, like it's just been like we just been developing, man, and just going crazy, you know. And I actually, I mean, I started to see the difference, of course, you know, being at other pro, being at other pro camps. And for my second fight, 
for my second fight, uh, I fought that January. So right after my second fight, I went to Terrell Goucher's camp and Virgil Ortiz was there. Uh, Alexis Rocha was there. Um, that was out in LA, right? Yeah, it was yeah. in LA. So I, I ended up going out there um, to train and I ended up uh, sparring Virgil, I sparred Alexis, I got uh, sparred Terrell. And I got a chance to really see, like, just like, you know, just being in the ring with, you know, they top, you know, um, contenders, you know what I'm saying? Rocha and Virgil, they contender fighters. So um, I got a chance to see, like, um, just being in there and trying to adjust to the pro style and stuff. So that camp, man, I learned a whole lot just off that one camp. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was, uh, that did a lot for me. When did you start working with PJ? How'd you guys meet? Well, PJ, you know, PJ, um, he was a top, he was a top boxer in the city since I was a little kid. You know what I mean? Um, I watched his generation from when I first started, you know what I mean? Um, he's part of the 08, um, he's part of the 08 class. So growing up, I don't, I don't watch them fight Golden Gloves. You know, you know, he turned pro. I don't, I don't watch them fight professionally. So I already, I already knew who PJ was. So, um, we all knew each other, and, that, and you know, I was the top. I was I was a top fighter in on the kid side in Cleveland. You know what I mean? Like everybody knew who I was. You know what I mean? So, um, 2019, I went to the last chance qualifiers, and PJ, uh, my my coach Saffo couldn't go because he had to work. So PJ flew out to. Uh, he met me at Oxnard where I had my last chance qualifiers for the uh, Olympic trials, and he coached me, and um, and that and that and that's when I was like, man, like. Just you know, give me my coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, him and him and Sappho is gonna be, you know, my coaches. So I was like, man, you know, uh, try to come back and yeah. you know, yeah. help me out. But even before that, um, it but when I was like uh 16, 17, when times was rough, like I wanted to go pro. Like, um, when I lost when I lost uh to Ryan, I was thinking about going pro. Cause I ain't mm -hmm. had none, I ain't really had I ain't have nothing. I ain't had nothing to lose, you know what I mean? So I'm like, man, I don't got no job, I'm not graduating. So I'm, like, I'm gonna just go go pro, but he he convinced me to not go pro. PJ was like, man, dude, do not do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was like, man, just just thug it out, man, and you know you're gonna be good. I was living in the projects, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it was a uh, you know PJ PJ for sure helped me out a lot. Yeah, now I'm look, coming back. Now I look at you. Speaking of Ryan, you want to run it back at some point? As oh, Garcia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I remember you texted me one time. You're like, yo, I gotta send this tweet. Like, uh. How, how does this look? Because he was talking that shit to Ryan. Oh, uh, now he's fighting Tank. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be... I actually want to go to that, man. But they sold out in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. Sneak in, Tiger. Just sneak, Just sneak in. in. You're a fighter. Just sneak in. I love to go to that fight. But uh, I hope I get a chance to run it back with him. Yeah. That was the only time you fought him? Yeah, that was the only time I fought him. And I wanted my rematch after that fight, but he turned pro. Mm. But, the but, but the crazy part was, it was like... I was so mad losing to him because I because like when I when I when I fought him, it was so much going in my head like just they were like um, like everybody was around me was like man you you gotta like you gotta uh dominate man or they gonna rob you or they gonna do this and that like you can't you know what I mean so it was just so much going on like you know what I mean so when he beat me, it was just like man I was just so mad like I wanted to fight him again so bad. But uh, you know, he he you know he ended up turning pro and you know, um I was I so the whole time I'm like, man, when I when I go pro, man, when I first chance I get, I'm getting my rematch, you feel me? But <laughs> uh for real, for real, like like I actually thank Ryan for turning pro. You know what I mean? Like cause that would have never happened. I would have never went to the youth worlds, mm -hmm. got the gold medal, you know what I mean? Um it all kind of happens for yeah, him. Yeah, like I, I, I think him and uh, Lua for turning pro. Like, what's the odds of that happening? The number three, yeah, yeah. getting caught. The number, the number one and the two turns pro. Yeah, at the same time. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that was that was just a blessing for me, man. So I thank both of them for doing that. But um, yeah, like hopefully I could I'll run it back with them. What happened in that in that fight? I haven't seen it, so I don't know how it went. Um, you saw him. It was. What did he do that was difficult? It, it's not really what he did what that was difficult. I was head hunting, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I was knocking people out before I fought Ryan. I was I was sleeping dudes, you feel me? But um when I fought Ryan, it was more it was more so 
um, it was like it was it was competitive in the beginning, but I was so busy trying to hair hunt that I was just I wasn't thinking right in the fight, you know what I mean? And he basically just edged me out, you know what I mean? But he he it was for he, he he's a good fighter, you know what yeah. I mean? So it was for sure like a, a good fight, you know what I'm saying? He beat me, you know what I mean? But um yeah, it was when I look back on what I could have did, like I like I was like, man, I could have beat him like so easy, but it was just I was just I just wasn't in the right mind, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, he, you know, he beat me fair and square, so you know. Yeah. But I know if I if you run it back, it's a whole different story. Yeah, yeah. There you, go. you got eight ounce gloves. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. gonna we gonna say that for that time. You feel me? You're making making strides, and I'm sure it's it's really a, it's a dream come true for you and your family. Mm. So you know, and then all that's gonna continue on uh, on April first. So yeah, I appreciate it, man. And and it's crazy too, man, because it's like, um, just coming from Cleveland, man. It's like, like Terrell signed to Al Heyman. And then Sean Porter was with Al Heyman. But other than that, it was like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm the first person to sign with Top Rank out of Cleveland. Are and then, you? you know, and then Abdullah, you know, Abdullah. Well, yeah, Abdullah, yeah. yeah. And then um, Dante. Dante, yeah. But I'm the first person to sign with Top Rank. You know what I mean? And out of Cleveland. But it was like, uh, it's crazy, man, because it's, it's like, um, it's so hard to make it out of Cleveland, man. Like, just on. And anything when it come to if you like any sport and whether it's football, basketball, boxing, um, whether if you just trying to go to college, like it's just so hard to make it out of Cleveland, man, because it's like it's just like a lot of it's just a, a horrible environment, you know what I mean? And um, one thing I can say about the sport sports in Cleveland is that we got diehard fans. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Outside of the outside of them, you know the environment. When it comes to sports, we got the most diehard fans. You know what I mean, and they gonna they they gonna they gonna ride with you for yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, we don't want to take too much of your time, bro, because we know you got to get back and uh, you know get back to camp and stuff. So we appreciate your time for sure. joining us here at the Top Rank HQ. Do you want to say a last minute bit to your fans? Uh, appreciate all the support, man. April first, you know, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna put on another show, another performance. Um, shout out to Bob Arum. Shout out to the whole top rank staff. Shout out to my management, um, Split T, uh, Dave McWaters, and you know, shout shout out to Ryan Wrenchin. Um, you know, we hey, April first, man. We're gonna be getting a knockout. You heard him here first. April first, Tiger Johnson, ESPN Plus.